Hello everyone, welcome to my channel In Search of Wonder. My name is Anne and today I'm going to be sharing with you a list of books that while they are not specifically Christmas books, they do have Christmas scenes in them. Some of them quite memorable. So first of all, I got started thinking about this topic when I mentioned a couple weeks ago that I read The Last Bookshop in London by Madeline Martin. And I mentioned in my uh, review of it, in my weekly wrap up, that it it had very Christmassy vibes to it. it the parts of the storyline totally reminded me of It's a Wonderful Life, the movie. And uh, it just has that really heartwarming, sweet Christmassy feel to it. On top of which, there are multiple Christmas celebrations that happen in this book. So it is not marketed as a Christmas novel and it's not like the themes of it are, you know, it's not focusing on Christmas, but it is a fantastic book to read at Christmas time. So if you haven't read it yet, this is a good time of year um, to curl up with this book and read it, even though it's set during wartime London and there is some heavy things that happen and that are discussed. The overall feel of it is, you know, genuinely just heartwarming kind of story, very sweet and lots of Christmas mentions and um, just overall good Christmassy kind of feel to it. So that got me thinking about what are some other books that while they are not specifically Christmas books, they do have Christmas scenes in them um, or mentions of Christmas, particularly if they are memorable. So um, I got to thinking about that and I came up with a list of most of these are books that I have read. Um, and uh, one is that is one that my sons have read and probably actually everybody else on the planet has read except for me. And um, maybe one or two that I haven't read but want to read and have heard that are good. So um, first of all, um, I had a list and then I have a stack and they're in different orders. So let's go with the stack. So the first one I'll mention is Anne of Green Gables. And in particular, in Anne of Green Gables, there is a memorable Christmas scene that where Matthew buys Anne a dress, um, much to Marilla's chagrin but um, Anne loves it and it kind of cements their relationship forever. That is a very memorable story um, set at Christmas time. Now the whole, obviously the books, the series, they're all about, you know, Anne's life. So she celebrates Christmas lots of times, right? So there are other Christmas scenes in the books. Um, so that one though is probably the most memorable when you think of Christmas and Anne of Green Gables, that's probably the scene you recall. And there is a whole book that I got recently, um, Christmas with Anne and Other Holiday Stories. And it pulls from um, Ella Montgomery's other books, from the Anne books and from other books, uh, different scenes from holiday stories and um, Christmas stories that she wrote. Another one is Catherine Brooke Comes to Green Gables. If you remember, that was the teacher that Anne worked with for a while. It was kind of like a grumpy lady and... Um, as usual, Anne was able to bring out the best in her, but part of it was they spent the holidays together. She was hospitable, and even though she didn't really like this girl, she invited her to come home to her house for the holidays. Uh, anyway, so um, this is specifically a book for Christmas time, but the whole Anne series obviously can be read any time of year, but definitely a good read for this time of year, of course, because, I mean, why not? I particularly want to mention another book in this series, Rilla of Ingleside, which Christmas actually, it didn't strike me at the time, but when I was flipping through it in preparation to make this video, I realized that actually, even though there aren't a lot of Christmas scenes, structurally Christmas is very important to this story because the story begins around Christmas time and it ends shortly after Christmas time. I think that like the last chapter begins with um, something about Christmas, but then it actually ends like in January or February of the following year. But, it, and and it seems like a lot of the, of the things that happen, the crucial things that happen, happen in conjunction with mentions of Christmas or whatever. 
And of course it spans the, the whole of World War I. And so multiple Christmases were celebrated during that time. So it's mentioned a couple of times. There are specific celebrations, at least one at the beginning of the book that happens. Um, so anyway, this one, it, this is one of my favorite books in the whole Anne series. And also Christmas plays a big part in the story, even though it's not a Christmassy book per se at all. So moving on. And this one, this one's obvious. This is a given. This is going to be on any list that you see online of classic books that have Christmas scenes in them. Because again, Christmas kind of plays a bit of a crucial element in this story. And that is, of course, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. So this is another one where it's not specifically a Christmas book, but Christmas plays a huge part structurally in the story. You know, there's Obviously, uh, anyone who's read the book or heard much about the book knows that the setting, at least the first part of this book, is that in Narnia, it is always winter, but never Christmas. And then as Aslan is coming, um, so he brings Christmas with him. And um, part of that is Father Christmas, and he gives gifts to the children. And uh, anyway, so Christmas plays a big part in the story of The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, even though it was not specifically written as a Christmas story. Um, and some very memorable Christmas-related scenes here in this book. And then another one that is not quite so obvious is Silas Marner, which you can see on the spine. Um, so Silas Marner, I just reread recently, and Christmas it plays a little bit of a lesser part than New Year's. There's a huge New Year's Eve party, and that is a crucial moment in the plot. That's where, like, all the things happen in the story. So is New Year's. However, there is a Christmas celebration, and there is, like, there's a whole scene where a little boy sings a Christmas carol. It's a very sweet scene. Um, he sings it to Silas Marner, and um, it's a whole part of the story that is developing between the characters at that point. So um, Christmas does play a part in this story. Again, it's not a Christmas book, but um, there are some memorable Christmas scenes in it. And this is another one that's good to read this time of year because... Um, you know, in the end, like there's a lot of heavy heaviness in it. There are heavy themes in this story and hard things that happen, but, but the conclusion is, you know, all heartwarming and ultimately it's a sweet and redemptive story. So this is another good one and it's not very long either. Um, it's a little bit heavier to read than, you know, many other, many Christmas stories, uh, which I find are usually pretty easy, quick reads. The writing style is not conducive to like breezing through it. I found, I found like, um, George Eliot is a little wordy, but, um, it's still a very good read this time of year. Now I might be wrong about this and someone can correct me if I am, but I feel like every book in the little house on the prairie has a Christmas scene in it. And of course it follows a large portion of the lives of Ma and Pa and their little family. And so they celebrate Christmas as the years go by. And some of them in particular are very memorable. There's the Christmas in the little house in the big woods and their first Christmas on the prairie. Um, there's the Christmas in when they're in their little sod house and um, their Christmas during the long winter. So there are many memorable Christmas scenes um, in the books. Christmas is when they're in South Dakota. Um, yeah, lots of Christmas goodness happening in these stories. And some of them are, are just scenes that have stuck with me my whole life. Like in particular, you know, when they were, when they were out in, in the middle of nowhere and, you know, scrapping together a Christmas celebration in, in part of a hardest time of year for them. And they were just happy with the smallest little treats, the smallest treats. Um, and that would just was very, uh, I don't know. I think that helped shape me when I was younger and reading those and realizing, you know, how little they got for Christmas, how, um, how much they obviously enjoyed celebrating Christmas and they had great Christmas celebrations, but it wasn't about, you know, the things that they got because they did not get much. They treasured everything that they got, but, um, I don't know. There was, it wasn't just getting, amazing things because they didn't get amazing things. They, they, they 
treasured and enjoyed the smallest of gifts with gratitude. And that really was very meaningful to me when I read it even many years ago as a child. And of course, more recently as well as an adult, I had an even greater appreciation for, um, for their appreciation for Christmas, no matter how minimally it ended up being celebrated and how little they received for Christmas. Anyway, so great Christmas scenes in that whole series of books. And another one is um, Little Women, and I love this old copy. I have this old vintage copy that was a um, one that was discarded from the library when I was a girl, the library where I grew up, and um, I bought it at a library sale. And when I was young, I was probably a preteen, I guess. I don't know. Um, and it's not really readable because it's kind of like fragile, uh, but... I, I, and I have other better copies of Little Women now, but I keep this one because um, it's just memorable. But of course, um, Little Women has the Christmas scene at the beginning of, like a book starts with Christmas. And so their father is away at war and they don't have a lot of money. And uh, what little they do have, they end up sharing with um, the Hummel family and there, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think there's more than one Christmas celebration in this book, right? Um, I feel like there's at least mentions of other Christmas goings on through the course of the book. Because again, it lasts several years through the course of the Civil War while their father is away and then he returns and I don't know, it's just a big span of their lives. So I think there's more than one Christmas celebration in here, if I remember correctly. Um, there is another book by Louisa May Alcott um, now, there may be other Christmas mentions in like Joe's Boys and Little Men. It's been a long time since I've read them, so I don't remember that specifically. But I know another book she wrote called Jack and Jill, which was one of my favorite books when I was a preteen. I, I read it a couple of times. And I, I haven't read it recently, and I don't currently have a copy, but it's one that I, w I would like to reread because I have just like great nostalgic memories of it. Um, and that one I know had at least one big Christmas scene. And I, I know like at the beginning of the story, they're sledding. I remember, um, because then there's an accident and that's kind of like what the whole story is about. So, um, that one definitely has a lot of Christmas, uh, mentions in it or like Christmas is a big part of the story, but it's not specifically again, a Christmas story. It just has a lot to do with Christmas. So, and that one is a really heartwarming one. I remember it made me cry. Uh, when I was younger and uh, I just really loved Jack and Jill, the main characters in the story. And um, it was a good book. So that's another one with good Christmas scenes in it. Another classic children's book with a good Christmassy sort of um, scene and feel to it is Hans Brinker and the Silver Skates. So it has been a long time since I've read it. I read it a couple of times when I was a child, preteen, and um, I loved it so much. I loved the story, and I don't have a copy. The copy that I used to have was like old and fell apart. I eventually got rid of it, um, <clears throat> so I need to replace that. But <clears throat> um, it takes place in Holland, and of course, um, in Amsterdam, there are all of these um, the canals that connect the city instead of roads. And so they skate on the canal and in the winter when it freezes over. And so that is a huge part of the story. So the story is set at winter time. And there is uh, definitely a lot of talk of Christmas and Christmassy things. There's the um, St. Nicholas festival, I guess it was uh, the celebration of St. Nicholas, which I think is early on in December that is talked about in the book as well. And also that one is definitely like, it's heartrending, but also heartwarming in the story. So it really has good Christmassy vibes to it. A good one to read this time of year. Although it's not specifically written as a Christmas novel. Um, it definitely has some Christmassy things going on there. And then um, this one is uh, Newton and Polly by Jody Headland, who is one of my favorite Christian fiction authors. And this particular book is like a biographical novel of John Newton, who wrote uh, the lyrics to Amazing Grace and has an amazing testimony and story. And I love how she 
stays true to the facts of their story, but she really fleshes out um, his story, particularly as it relates to Polly, the women that he married and their love story. And um, she was very beautiful, beautifully told and um, will just draw you right in. And I love how she wrote their story. And it's one I want to reread. I read it several years ago at Christmas time and I would like to read it again. Actually, this was a Christmas gift for me a few years back. So anyway, the story begins at Christmas time and the first few chapters are set during uh, the 12 days of Christmas one year and the year when um, Polly and John Newton meet for the first time. And uh, there's like caroling there and Christmas parties and all kinds of stuff at the beginning of the story. So really gets you in the whole Christmassy mood from the get go. But from then on, it's really just about their relationship and John's life and the things that he went through and his uh, testimony of salvation and how they finally end up together. So that is a very good book. I highly recommend that one. And then, um, I want to mention another one that I alluded to that my boys have told me about. My boys love Harry Potter. And um, when I was looking up books that um, have Christmassy scenes in them, even though they're not Christmas books per se, Harry Potter was one that was on almost every list. And so I was asking my boys about it and According to my younger son, it's really kind of a thing in the books. And there's a scene in every single one of the books that's Christmas related. I, however, am probably the last person on the planet that has not read the Harry Potter series. So I have no firsthand experience about this. If you happen to have not read Harry Potter either, well then I offer it to you as a possibility as a book to read that will have some nice, fun, Christmassy scenes in it that you might enjoy. Um, yeah, fantasy is just, I don't, it doesn't attract me at all. So I have read some fantasy, but it's not one that I reach for um, or am drawn to. So I have, I've just never read them. I have nothing against them, just never read them. So yeah, that's another one that I just thought felt like it needed to be included in the list because I feel like it's probably pretty obvious. So I don't want to leave it out, but there you go. The last one I will mention, it's not really like a last but least, not least sort of situation. It's just the last one in my stack. So that is A Gentleman in Moscow by Amor Tells. And um, it has, I think it, there's multiple mentions maybe of Christmas or, you know, it's because time, like a lot of time passes in this story, like decades of time pass. Um, but I think Christmas, there's really only one Christmas scene in spite of however many years that happened. I think there's only one Christmas scene in the beginning. There may be another one Christmas-ish towards the end, but I think the only, there's only one really at the, towards the beginning of the book. And, um, it's kind of a, a longer scene. There's a, there's some time spent on, uh, the Christmas goings on in the hotel where he is living and it introduces some of the main characters uh, during this time. So, um, and during this scene. So it's kind of important earlier on in the book. Um, and then this is this is kind of um, a cozy read. I mean, I that's not what most people would call it. And it's not really like, probably wouldn't put it in that category, but in many ways it kind of is. Like, yeah, I mean, it's set during um, communist Russia and this man is, for all intents and purposes, imprisoned in a hotel. And it's about how, you know, all of the things he goes through and the people related to him, you know, some of them go through really heavy things. And in the end, he escapes, etc. But just the way that it's told, it's just, it's it's not, you're not going to be filled with angst when you're reading it. You know, it's, it's just not the style of it. So um, nothing too horrible happening and it ends well, more or less at the end of the story. So, um, and he, the, the main character is in many ways, just a likable guy. So, um, it's a fun one to read and it does have that, that nod to Christmas at the beginning. I think it's appropriate that the Christmas scene happens towards the beginning and that there's not really much going on Christmas Eve after that, even though it spans many years, uh, because Christmas was 
um, pretty sure it was forbidden. The celebration of Christmas was forbidden at some point by the Communist Party because, you know, they outlawed all orthodoxy and all, all, all forms of religion, really, and um, of Christianity. And um, instead, they made New Year's Eve the big celebration. And to this day, as far as I know, New Year's Eve is really the big holiday celebration in Russia, by and large, although now they do celebrate Christmas as well. So, um, but there was a period of time during the communist regime that they did not celebrate Christmas at all. They only celebrated New Year's and like the tree, they called it a New Year's tree and uh, etc. So anyway, um, so that is my list of books that mention Christmas and have memorable Christmas scenes in them to one extent or another. Let me know if any of them you have read and if you can think of others to add to my list uh, because I am curious. I It took me, um, it was hard for me to like remember the Christmas scenes from the books and some of them I would think like, I feel like there was Christmas going on in that book, like the Newton and Polly one. So I had to kind of like skim through them and uh, flip through them and see if my memory served me correctly. Um, so if there are other books that you can think of to add to the list that have some good Christmassy scenes in them, let me know. We'll get ourselves a nice big long list together. And that's it for now. I'll see you next time. Thank you for watching. Leave a comment and like, and I will talk to you next time. Bye.